During this class, we'll learn about many art periods and how it has evolved throughout the history, affecting society. From the beginning of this class, learning about the Renaissance, to now learning about Impressionism. But there's one thing I've noticed about each of the art periods. There's a lack of emptiness. It's weird to say that, but if you think about it, an artist tries to fill up the space by putting a lot of detail, which is fine. It's great. It's eye appealing. But I want to talk about that emptiness that is lacking, basically, as they call it, the negative space, and how powerful of a tool it can be used when painting and drawing. Negative space is a space around an object. It can be an art piece that emphasizes the space rather than the object, putting said object in the corner or at the bottom of the art piece. Negative space can also be used by interchanging and overlapping the object with the space. One prominent artist that uses negative space is Seshu Toyo. Uh, this is a Japanese artist that uses this said technique in his paintings in a very unique way. Seshu Toyo, a Japanese painter who is considered to be one of the greatest masters of a Chinese art form called Sumi, a technique where Chinese artists or Japanese artists use only black bold ink strokes and paint only the important characteristics that make up the subject. Looking into Seshu's work, his painting landscape is literally considered the prime example of this technique, often regarded as the greatest Japanese ink painting of all time. Looking at this piece, we see a tree in the middle that was made with black brush strokes. He doesn't go into any great detail. But he gets the construction of the tree down. Around the tree, we see a lot of empty space. Seshu uses Kwanzai negative space, a technique Zendetic Koshib named. In his article Kwanzai negative space painting, he says there's a relationship between the positive and negative space, which creates this illusion of a dimensional space. The mountain in the painting looks like it's in the distance. Using this positive and negative space relationship, with the negative space bleeding into the positive space, giving the thinly inked brush strokes depth as if there was a thick fog under it. Seshu uses negative space very masterfully here, showing us how nothing can play a big role into the painting. Looking at another painting, he takes this an idea and pushes it even further with his painting Habak Ansui by incorporating negative and positive space on everything. The houses are just floating lines being connected by the negative space around the line. You would think that the houses will look incomplete and unbalanced, but on the contrary, it feels balanced with the rest of the painting, which incorporates this positive and negative space relationship. Looking at the mountains on the left, he uses the black brush strokes for the shadows, the darks of the mountain, leaving the negative space to do the light of the mountain, as if there was a light source coming from the left. With Kwanzai negative space, it gives the mountain form and depth. Though negative space wasn't incorporated in art in the past as much, it has in the present time with the minimalist art movement, which incorporates a lot of what Toyo does in his painting, which is the use of negative space and minimal use of detail. One modern piece of art that does something similar to Toyo's painting is an ad poster for the animated movie Brave, created by Michael De Pippo. Here, we see the bear being shaped by the girl's hair, and how the curls give the bear its head and its big body. We also don't see a lot of detail, but it's clear and readable on what the artist is trying to represent. Though it's a poster for a movie, it shows how effective and amazing the uses of negative space is. Though Toyo isn't credited as an influencer in the uses of negative space and the uses of minimal detail, I feel more people should look into his work and see how important it was indirectly in creating a new way of creating art.